We'll uh, we'll do all that good stuff, and then we will start our prediction. Jimmy, thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, into the Nexus Gaming Series Nexus Division matchup of Team versus Juice Pirates. On the side of Team, we've got Varian, Vala, Chen, Sylvanas, and Rhaegar. On the side of Juice Pirates, we've got a Blaze, Joanna, Li Ming, Tychus, and Lucio. As I mentioned, Vala is going to be going into queues. How many Q stacks for Vala by the end of the game? There you go. She's going to go puncturing arrow at level one. Get your gambles in. You got two minutes to do so if you would like to take part in the gamble. And if you don't, you'll make Bandit sad. And no one wants to do that. They pick none of the Juice Pirate heroes. How can they juice? Uh, I mean. Yeah. Same with StarCraft 1. Once you finish the Zerg Star, the only option is to play Zerg again. <laughs> I just, dude, I just love Heart of the Sword, man. It's such a fun campaign. The, like, the theme of it all. So we'll see. We'll see. Wings of Liberty is okay, but it, you have to play Terran, so there's that. Imagine if Juice Pirates never juiced all season. Imagine if Juice Pirates lost to us juicing pirates. Juice pirating. The irony. The iron butt. <laughs> the iron butt. Anyways, three stacks for Vala already. Uh, there still is time to get your predictions in. Are there any believers out there? Any believers? I see that there are a few doubters. Blank is going to be stepping up on that Joanna. Viper getting a little bit low is going to be pressed back in B, or excuse me, pressed back to the well. Going to be able to tap that and just chain heal from the far side of the gate to a couple allies. As Zeratul only is playing Vala. Okay. Um. Uh, let me let me do a little research for all of you at home. Uh, there was no Zeratul ban, so this Vala player is a filthy liar. Should change their name to Zeratul sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, was, that, was, that wasn't even funny. Uh, Rantor in top lane versus Catroms. Cataroms? Catroms. Catroms, maybe. Hmm? Nothing really major happening. Wow, Varian and Vala at the exact same stacks. LOL Baja. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What about Zeratul rarely? I don't know. By the end of the series, we'll find out. What if it goes to game three and not a single Zeratul is banned the entire time and not a single Zeratul is picked? Then I would say Zeratul rarely. Absolutely. Nyan is uh, just uh, throwing out a little bit of damage. Gets the Haunting Wave back. This is a uh, Tychus getting a little bit low, but Varian is also getting Punish Shield Glare onto the uh, Vala, who is going to be able to hearth back, get full mana and HP. As neither team has gotten the Fallen Shaman Camp, uh, Varian might be, Rhaegar might be. Okay, so we have Blaze to split off. Rhaegar and Sylvanas on the left. Chen will continue to soak up top lane. He did go Freshest Ingredients. I assume this will be the flying kick talent at level four because those, uh, those, uh, do 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 brain, those synergize very well. There we go. That's the word I was looking for because what essentially happens between these two talents and there, there it is actually right there. I think it's deadly strike. So let's talk about this. So freshest ingredients. What does it do? You increase the healing duration of regeneration globes by 150%. Nice. That's the baseline. The reward for the 15 regeneration goals is reduce fortifying brute cooldown by two seconds and 50% of his shields persist indefinitely after drinking. Now, why does this synergize with Deadly Strike? Well, Deadly Strike, Flying Click, no longer costs Brew. Additionally, its damage is increased by 125, while Chen has shields from fortifying Brew. While I was explaining a very basic combination of talents, Vala does go down. She's on 12 stacks currently. Hey, Chen, or Chen, sorry. Hey, Brian, what's up, bud? The Chen W's threw me off. I feel like you have to, Stark. I uh, I feel I know I know I I don't I don't need to feel bad, but this is this is I was raised in the Midwest in Catholic school, so of course I'm it's just there it's in my brain. I feel a little bad not grabbing the game tonight, but there's also just like I wanted to not stream for eight hours um, <laughs> this week. I don't mind streaming for eight hours. I just, I just, I just needed a break. I just need a little bit of a break from some of the long streams. So 
We'll do we'll do live games next week, but this week we're just taking a, a, a small break. I feel like we might be baited into juice pi juice pirating juice pirates, but I also feel if it's more reason to do it. I think if you juice pirates juice pirates in game one, I think that's that's I think that's just a fun way to open up a series. There's a game tonight. Isn't there? A, is it a game? T t oh, tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow night. I think I think it was tomorrow night. Sorry. My apologies. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. I believe you guys play tomorrow night. Top lane fort is going to be going down to the immortal as we still have Durr taking a bit of damage. Finishes out the level one. Hungering arrow at 16 stacks for the Vala currently. As Sylvanas is just going to soak up the bottom lane. Pretty sure it's tomorrow night. Well, I can look at the calendar. Well, Blaze and Sylvanas uh, do that little thing. Let's uh, there we go. let that load for a second. We got a top lane camp to be grabbed. And a level eight apiece. 10 talent here I'm on the horizon for both these teams. Still have a little bit to go. Uh, yeah, uh, Gilly Shark at Bingo Night play against Under Noob Management Thursday at 6 p.m. PDT. But if we if we pick up that live game, that means I'm ca I'm streaming from 11 a.m. till roughly like 7:30, 8 o'clock at night. That's just a long day. It's just a long day. Yep. I'll have to make sure that I keep my eyes out for the Juice Pirates matchup to, to, to make sure I see any Juice Pirates action. Baha did, doesn't mess up names, he only gives new identities. Ooh, okay. Li Ming goes down to the Hungering Arrow of Vala. Getting 22 stacks on that Puncturing Arrow. Nearly halfway to the bet right there. You should use a wrist support brace so preventing carpal tunnel. Huh? What? What should I do? I'm confused. Anyways, uh, second immortal phase will be spawning here. North-south positioning. We'll have the 11 stacks for the Chen currently. Nice back off from Vala to avoid... The, the uh, arcane orb from Li Ming, as well as the magic missiles. More poke out from Vala as well. The Viper gonna take a chunk of damage right there. We do have the uh, variant stepping in, Wailing Arrow from the Sylvanas as the multi shot. Excuse me, the strafe from Zeratul only getting some value in Sister Healing onto the variant. Dur gonna continue to step in with the allies. Chen looking to jump onto Blank, but only is able to get over to this blaze. Starts drinking through some of the pain as Zeratul only is going to start working on the Immortal. Are Vikings viable and competitive? Absolutely. They're hard to... Yeah, there you go. They're hard to play. Uh, they're not good for every map, obviously. But yeah, they're definitely like Towers of Doom. Towers of Doom is probably one of the most common maps we see Vikings on uh, competitively. I'd say Towers of Doom, uh, Dragonshire sometimes we see them. Uh, Garden of Terror is a map where we can see them. Uh, if we're looking at, like, Storm League, uh, Warhead Junction can be a good map for them because of just how big it is. So you can utilize your team to, like, hard push a lane, have the Vikings soak other lanes. You might lose a little bit of Viking value sometimes, but if you hard push, like, a boss lane or something like that. Uh, Curse Hollow is a great map for them as well. A lot of maps where, like, you can you can hard push one lane and have Vikings do stuff in two other lanes, and then, like, Eric can run around stealing camps and stuff or harassing the enemy. So, absolutely, Vikings are, are viable. It's just, as Chad even was saying, they're extremely hard to play, and it's also, it's a hero that I feel like you really need to be in comms with to kind of, not to kind of, but to, to, to work well and synergize uh, together. It's like, it's like playing Medivh. With a like, it's like having a random Medivh on your team that you're not in comms with. It's not. It's it's gonna be more difficult because you know you don't, you can't communicate. Oh, I need a protection because I'm gonna jump in, or I need a portal because I'm gonna I need to get out. Stuff like that. So, like Medivh, Medivh is very good, and there's Medivhs out there that don't need that. You know, to be on comms and they have the intuition. But I would say same thing in a competitive manner. Medivhs, Lost Vikings, these kind of heroes, they need that 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 on comms value to 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 really really. Uh, showcase or pop off like here, here's a good counterpoint or uh here's a good example from the other side sergeant hammer everyone kind of knows what to do around a sergeant hammer you play under her umbrella 
and you win the fight. That's it. With Vikings, like, like if Hammer sieges up, everyone stays in the circle and fights around that circle. Hammer boosts away, you all kind of leave. Like, you don't need to be in comms for that. Maybe if there's, like, a Rhaegar who's like, oh, I'm holding Ancestral for you, like, don't mount up and leave. Like, yeah, there's that communication, but... It's one of those things, the intuition level is, is a lot different between those two, uh, those, those, those types of characters. A haunting wave in from the Sylvanas as well as her Wailing Arrow, wave of force from the Li Ming, but the members of team continue to pressure the enemy with 31 stacks on the Vala. I've seen Viking players swear by them on every map except for maybe Tomb. Yeah, I feel like Tomb is the one map where I rarely see Vikings just because of how small it is. And I think it's just, it's the rotations are so small and short that uh, ganks on the Vikings are, are easy to do. And also it's just being able to move around that map with a good soul laner is not hard either. A lot of good damage. That's going to be a combustion blaze. Why is there so much combustion lately? We literally casted a combustion blaze last week. Okay. A lot of stress to micro to pick up gems and turn them in. That is a good point too, uh, Stark, yeah. Hey, Actar, what's up, bud? You're returning to classes today? Just call in sick, dude. Isn't this your last semester, Actar? Uh, why don't more people play HOTS? I feel like it's, an e it's the best MOBA, easy to get into, hard to master. Um... There's there's a lot of factors, a lot there's a ton of factors. Um not having a professional esports scene actually is a reason for some people not to watch HOTS or play it. Uh I, I knew I knew so many people who were in the master category that when HCC was over, they just were like, I'm going back to League. Ancestor healing on to the Chen who does pop the Storm Earth and Fires. That will be Tychus to go down as well as the Lucio and the Joanna. We should see the Blaze fall even though he's got the Pyromania. It's not going to be enough. Sylvanas is going to Haunting Wave in but doesn't get the kill onto the Li Ming. But the, still, the Belleth will go into bottom lane. Because there's no content. There's no more content. That's true too. I mean, I, I, I would honestly say there are a myriad of reasons why people don't play this. Like, like look at... Like, look at... Uh, Look at League, for example. League has their challenger stuff, or they've got the, um, the, the, they've got Clash. They literally have something built into their game where people who are not professional can go play competitively without having any sort of organization on the Riot end outside of the in-game thing. Like, it's, it's like, like Crush said, like, it's content. It's also, there's an eSports that people can follow. There's, like, there's stuff still happening. There's developer support. So it's one of those things that, like, so a lot of people look at HOTS and go, well, there's no there's no trajectory for HOTS in content. We're not going to get a new hero. We're not going to get a new eSport. Like, yeah, we'll have community grassroots and stuff like that, but it's kind of, it's going to stagnate. Like, that's the that's the blunt of it all. I love this game and I don't plan to go anywhere, but it is going to stagnate when it comes to, there's no there's no patches, there's no changes, there's, there's yeah. Whereas if you look at, like, League or Dota or, or, or like, e even, like, FPS games right now, like Apex Legends and stuff, those have patches, they have tournaments, they have in-game content. Um, so there's, there's, st they've, they, I mean, we have seasons here, absolutely, but there's not like crazy cool season rewards or battle passes and stuff. So it's, it's a lot of that. It's, it's why, why would I play a, a quote-unquote dead game when I can play a game that's, that's, that's got like stuff around it still. Like there's League of Legends Worlds and there's the Dota International and there's, there's Apex Legends, huge like Apex tournaments and stuff like that. So, it's it's uh, it's it's a myriad of things. Me, I love Hots because it was the first mobile I played that I dedicated to, and I enjoy it. So, a little bit of a ramble. Can the pro scene come back, or is it foregone conclusion? I don't think we'll ever see an HGC. I really don't think so. Also, my this is the point that I always like to make. Imagine, imagine your, imagine your like, let's say your Tempo Storm. Not even the players, not even like cattle and stuff like that. Who's on Tempo Storm? Let's just imagine you're the company Tempo Storm. I'll hold that thought as we have the Bless Shield from the Joanna, Combustion from the Blaze, Vala will pop the Strafe, but that is going to be a back off. Imagine your Tempo Storm. Blizzard comes to you and says, "We're bringing back the HCC. You guys want to have a spot because you guys used to have a spot." Imagine being Tempo Storm. Do you really think you'd want to invest into a Heroes of the Storm team and stuff like that for a game where they pulled that 
essential crap that they did a couple of years ago where they just fired everyone with an email? I wouldn't. Like, if I was an executive for StempoStorm, I'd say, let's dump more money into, like, ventures that actually have promise. Like, let's make a CSGO team. Let's, let's, let's do stuff with Smash. Like, all of those have a promising future. So that's, that's my two cents on it. Like, could they do it? Mate, sure, but will people actually go in? Uh, I'm doubtful. I mean, I'm sure there's people that would look for opportunities. Tychus is, ah, oh, nice kill from the Immortal. The spin will get the kill. Nyan is a little deep, does go down to the Tychus and the Commandeer Odin with his Ragnarok missiles and Annihilation. That will be the Ancestral just shy of connecting onto Rhaegar. We have Zeratul only falling as well. Chen? Ah, taken down by Li Ming. Oh, that's all five members dead, and the immortal shall go to the side of Juice Pirates. If uh, also there's there's people out there who they just wanna they just literally wanna play on a on a singular map, you know. There's people that like to, that that Dota and League and and some of those places that it's the same map always. I like that there's the the bunch of different maps here in Heroes of the Storm. I love that there's different mechanics and battlegrounds and themes and motifs. Like I, that's that's one of the big draws for me. The demon moves for the gates of heaven. People make the dead game argument about old editions of miniature games all the time if there weren't new content releases. I think people feel like they're wasting their time getting good at something that will never evolve. Yeah, that's a very good way to say it, Brian. That's absolutely a beautiful way to put it. Counterpoint, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Uh, I, I, I think, I think, Ektar, you're comparing apples and oranges. <laughs> I don't think you can compare Melee to miniature games. I, I, I don't, I don't think there's, there's a correlation between those two. For us, HOTS is fine, we're here. Exactly, yeah. Like there's 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 gonna be there's always gonna be the players for HOTS. And I'm I don't plan to go anywhere. But I also do have to look at ventures that also I can cast that are promising in the future. Like StarCraft 2 is a dead game, quote unquote. Wow. An absolute uh bloodbath at the end of Battlefield of Eternity here. We have a taunt from the very end, but it doesn't really seem like it's going to be upsetting Tychus too much. The Immortal does scratch the core shielding. Really? Really, really, really? Archon pure power, eh? I mean, like, look at CCL. Like, CCL, you had to, you had to pay six players on the side of CCL. That wasn't even the orgs paying. GG. Map number one goes over to the side of uh, Juice Pirates. GG, well played. Honestly, it's optimal time to pick. Oh, no, absolutely. But whenever I see it, it always, like, it's one of those things that, like, when I see it, like, it's one of those talents that people take. It's like, oh, we're winning. Oh, we're gonna win. <laughs> that's how I feel. Maybe that's not, like, maybe that's not what the, what Cam is, like, mentally thinking. But... When I see this talent and I'm casting, I'm just like, oh, this team plans to win. All dead, go core, alt tab. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, how many level one, <clears throat> excuse me. How many Vala Q stacks by the end? She had 44 or less. She had 41. Okay. Hey, Cav, what's up, bud? I hear there's casting going on here. There is, there is. We're also we're also just rambling about other stuff that people are asking me in, in chat. You're exhausted? I'm sorry to hear that. Did you also not sleep well last night? Need sleep, but working instead? Oh, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, bud. I hope you get some good sleep tonight. Hey, Cookie, what's up, bud? You got like 40 minutes of sleep last night? Oh my god. I really hope you actually get some tonight. That's awful. I'm so very sorry to hear that. <laughs> Rambling in a Baja stream? Impossible. Is Hots getting any more patches? Exclamation patch. You uh, I was seeing something about that in Discord. Well, I hope I hope the dog is comfortable. 
And I hope you get some sleep tonight. I hope you all get some sleep tonight. All right, the players did not swap sides. It's always good. Let's update the score. And uh, let's see what kind of prediction we can make for Braxis Holdout. What is this? My buddy sent me something. Hold on. Video expedition films Mystery Creature in Lake Tahoe. Oh, what? Tahoe Tessie? An expedition aimed at obtaining a rare view of the bottom of Lake Tahoe netted footage of a mysterious creature swimming in the famed body of water. Potentially historic studies, the brainchild of California man, Chase Petley, who became intrigued by the mystery. I love, I love, like, creepy lore. What, what's it called? Cryptids. I love cryptid stuff. Uh, over the course of two days, uh, Tahoe Deep uh, team uh, plumbed to the depths in hope of finding something, perhaps a glow stick. Uh... Local residents call the Tales of the Lake a site uh, by being a site of body dumps by organized uh, crime figures, which actually that was up here. Even a mysterious cryptid named Tahoe Tessie. There it is, yeah. Posture check. I am slouching pretty bad today. How's your posture, Mel? Redeem the hydrate. I can hydrate. Looks like a shark at the bottom of Tahoe. Well, so so Tahoe is the second deepest natural lake in the United States. And uh, back in, was it the 60s? Uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. was kidnapped by the mafia in Lake Tahoe. So there was actually mafia things happening in this, uh, in this city. So, yeah, there you go. Atrocious, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really. My posture today is not good. Let's see. Is there a Zeratul ban? There's no Zeratul ban. This Zeratul only player really needs to play some Zeratul. I'm just saying. Uh. All right. Start prediction. Which team gets uh, level ten first? Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the wow. You think you can come into my town, drink my lake water, snowboard like it's nothing, pal? I do indeed. He's a fraud? Who? Who's a fraud? He's a big phony. Hey guys, this guy's a phony. Oh, this is a this guy's a big old phony. Welcome back into the Nexus Gaming Series Nexus Division matchup of Team versus Juice Pirates. On the left hand side, we have Team with Muradin, Tassadar, Rexar, Vala, Brightwing, and Misha. Over on the side of Juice Pirates, we've got an Anduin, Leoric, Tychus, ETC, and Li Ming. Now, we have a new prediction. Which team will hit level 10 first? Get your gambles in, ladies and gentlemen, as we will get into Systems the bottom of the map. Zera tool only, eh? Hmm. Five, hmm. Four, three, two, one. Hmm. Good luck. This does not look like a tool to me. The wrong Protoss has been drafted. At least it wasn't a Phoenix. Am I right, chat? I had a, I, a stream deck. You had one job. You had one job, stream deck. <laughs> All right. Uh, you still have you still have a little bit of time to get your gamble in on which team will hit level ten first. I will do my best to pay attention. Uh, I will probably forget to pay attention because I'll start going on a ramble about pizza. Ooh, good shock ray from Tassadar does find the kill. We do have the uh, Tassadar going into the auto build. I have actually, I've been playing a lot of Tassadar in, in like quick match games and stuff like that. And I've been loving the auto build. The auto build has been really, really, really fun. Early game, you can kind of get beat up, but late game, like once you get to like level 10 at least, I think like you're doing pretty good with the auto build. Okay, looking up in top lane, you got a bear up against a skeleton. I'm a huge fan of auto attack build on mages. Who else has an auto build as a mage? I guess Zeratul does. Zeratul's kind of a melee mage in a sense. Kael'thas kind of. Oh, that's fair. Chromie kind of. Well, yeah, Chromie kind of, right? 
Yeah, Chromie's got a talent, yeah. Bro uh, Bronzebeard Talons, I think it is? No, not Bronzebeard Talons. Bronze Talons? Jaina, Ming, Chromie. Got you. ETC is, uh, uh, excuse me, Tychus is blocked by the Force Wall. That's a lot of damage on Davala, who is getting low. And this is going to be the channel for the Zerg Wave. Dur does stall that out. We got 12% over to the side of Juice Pirates. Team? Going to be looking to continue to siege in through bottom lane. Bottom lane is where the blue Zerg would go if the members of Team can grab this first. Why, if they can get some charge. They will get a little bit. You always get a little bit. You always get like an Ultralisk and some Lings, uh, guaranteed. But here you go, you got a Bane Ling. Oh, like, actually see, there's a little bit more charge coming through. So we're gonna see there's that Bane Ling coming out. Should see a Guardian soon. So, little little cool things like that. So you can actually see on the mini-map. So red to top, blue to bottom. So pre-sieging the bottom lane is actually huge for the side of team. If they're able to get this subjective phase team, is gonna be able to get some decent damage through the uh the fort and bottom lane nine is uh vaulting forward trying to get this uh consistent auto attack damage in the members of this uh of team are gonna step up okay i'm done i'm done <laughs> i'm done that's how you're supposed to say it yeah this is auto attack but it mainly empowers your pyre oh yeah yeah i know i know the build you're talking about so, Leork stalls out the top lane. Don't stop being you, please. What do I think of Abathur? Uh, he is a uh, great Zerg. Oh, I think Abathur's great. I love Abathur. Does he work on every map? No. Does he Does he work well on the maps that, that he's draftable on? Absolutely. Like Curse Hollow, Towers of Doom. Uh, Dragonshire, I think, is actually doable for him, though he can get kind of flanked easily. Um, Inferno Shrines is doable as well. It's a lot. There's a lot of maps that are good for him. Maybe not, maybe not, like, Hanamura Temple or Tomb, maybe? Uh, but you could still, I think you could still run him on Tomb, realistically. You could still do that. I think you could realistically run him on any map. I think just Tomb will be a little bit weak. Battlefield will be a little weak. Hanamura might be a little weak. According to teams who play against us, Abathur works everywhere. Well, I mean, Schumann's, Schumann's Abathur is absolutely wild, let's be honest. Dude literally getting a keep before the fort goes down with backdoor keep and ranged uh, locust build. Ah, oh, man, I, I love, like, Schumann's, Schumann's Abathur play is always a joy to watch for me. All right, kill onto ETC quite quickly right there. Seven talents here for the side of team. How would you pronounce a team called U U U U U U W U U U U U? I I don't know. U W U. Can force Abathur anywhere, but there are many that I just don't want to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's also comfort. Like, would I play Asmodan on every map? Absolutely. Do I think he's good on every map? Or would I would I like would I actually want to play him on every map? Not really. Like, it's like, it's like, can I? Sure. Do I? No, not really. But that's also personal preference. Yeah, the Force Wall from Tassadar not going to be coming through, and he, the Muradin does go down. The Zerg Wave still, the Guardians are still finding value in the top lane. Guardians outrange uh, structures by quite a bit. Ooh! Oh, they got the, uh, they got the little, uh, they got the little bile drop. I just thought they were going to do it. Exactly, Revolver, exactly. I've even gotten good enough uh, getting gems and turning it on Tomb as Abathur. Nice. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of viability with, with, with um, heroes, and there are niche heroes as well, but it also comes down to draft and stuff like that. Like, if you're going up a Genji, you're going up against, like, a Genji as Abathur, gotta be conscious, uh, conscious of, uh, getting, like, just dove and ganked by the Genji. Uh, are you playing against a Tyrande and a Phoenix? You're probably going to die. And if you're wondering why, Tyrande can use Sentinel, her, her owl, to scout you out, and then Phoenix can, uh, Planet Cracker you before... It takes longer for Abathur to take off a hat and move out of the Planet Cracker than it does for Planet Cracker to kill Abathur. So, there you go. If you've ever wanted to counter an Abathur easily, just pick Phoenix and Tyrande. 
There you go. There's, there's, there, there you go. There's something Phoenix actually does in the game. He can kill. He can kill. He can kill the weakest hero in Heroes of the Storm. Taranda on a tiger. Ho, 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 ho. Diablo also scouts you with a a Yeah, yeah. Chromie could eventually. Chromie could scout you out technically too with uh, Time Walker's Pursuit at level one. Murky. I mean, Murky could just suicide onto you. Yeah. Or are you asking me if Murky's viable? Level 10 for blue, indeed it is. Thank you for pointing it out. Level 10 for the side of team. I will pay that out in a second. Just give me one moment here as the fight does break out in the top lane. Commandeer Odin does come down. We have the Archon from the Tassadar. As I think ETC was trying to stage dive. You see it on a 10 second cooldown right now. I think he was just trying to get away with the stage dive, but it's not gonna work out. Murden with the Stormbolt has the cooldown reduction post 10. He's looking to get some value here, but the phase shift from Brightwing will be utilized to make sure that Murden is safe. Choose the outcome, which team gets level 10 first. Team will get level 10 first. Tychus dashes forward. Is there a grenade to kill the Murden who gives the avatar out? Nice stage dive in from the ETC. Reset City for Li Ming, as that will be Vala trying to back away, is able to do so. And she doesn't die, so she has still all of her Gambit stacks. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, Keep goes down. Rexar doing Rexar things. We'll cycle through the other numbers while 13 is approaching. Okay. 9,000 hero damage from Murden. Oh, oh, he's going to get a little bit more as he's going to brawl it against the Tychus. Tychus, though, shredding through the enemy quite a bit. 25, uh, 26,000 for Tychus, 31,000 for the Li Ming. Tassadar with 26,000 heroic damage. Misha goes down, which gives a reset to Li Ming. Blank a little bit low. Are there any heroes that are not competitive viable? Maybe like Probius. Uh, it, it depends on it depends on the level of the the level of play. In CCL, there was Probius, and it just didn't look good in my opinion. Um, so I think like at like the high echelons of play, like Heroes International, um, probably Storm Division uh, for NGS or in the past uh, Hero CCL. I I don't think Probius and things like that are that good. Like like Murky, I don't think is that that great feels more like a troll pick than anything else uh but i mean as stark was saying in chat in different divisions like even like nexus division is still very very like skilled players if you want to know the mmr ranges for the ngs teams use exclamation ngs mmr into chat but i mean like these these players are all very very skilled as well and some some teams can just make it work i mean like here's a good example cattle cattle's an amazing here's a storm player do, you, do i think that cattle could play tomorrow Maybe not. You put maybe if you put Cattle on Samuro, he might not look that great. You put Cattle on Muradin, he's gonna look like a god. So it's it's one of those things. Like I also think it's also player skill level as well with that character. Nexus Division isn't th that skilled of players. I'm in it. Exclamation Owl! Exclamation Owl begs to differ. So I mean. The answer is yes, but also no. It just, it really depends on who's playing it and the, the, the divisions and stuff like that. Uh, Vala doesn't have 16 yet, but she's still chasing in. She's got that, she's just got auto build, so she really chunks in. A Manticore at level 16 will be absolutely terrifying, as the Zerg pen will fill for top lane in favor for the side of team. That was Division A. Yeah, but did Nexus Division exist back then, Kaimo? That's the question, because I don't think Nexus Division existed back then. Or if it did, it was like it was like the heroic division that is now. Uh, bottom lane, Rexar is kind of fine right now. Does have that bestial wrath on Demisha. Okay, he's not fine anymore. Uh, top lane is a huge wave coming through with the Hellbats reducing armor. You've got the Goliaths as well as here comes the Zerg wave. You love that team name? Team? 
Tessadar with his auto build will bounce to enemies, which means he'll be constantly targeted by the structure, which does, it, it's good and bad because it's good because he's got the shielding. He can kind of like take a shot or two. Bad because, well, it's also good because of the fact that he uh, pulls away from the Zerg wave. Just bad that he could potentially get ganked. That's really the only thing. Uh, we have a boss set up here as well. Makes you giggle every time. I'm glad to make you laugh. All right, well, Juice Pirates will clear things out. They've lost all structures, well, all major structures. Bosses, yeah, they're considering it here, but... I think it was too long for the Zerg wave to be cleared. Is Dur seen? Dur is seen. Just swapping between the two visions. Misha just gonna face check the bush and just get shredded. Okay. Poor Misha being sacrificed to check a bush. 12 seconds on the uh, death timer for Misha. We have the Oracle from Tassadar to be utilized. Pass also, by the way, passive while stationary, gain 30 armor, sp 30 spell armor for 0.75 seconds and restore 22 health a second. Good for auto build because you're just standing still. <laughs> Good regeneration from that as well. Uh, solid level lead to the side of team. And that's Manticore as well. Manticore Vala. Li Ming sitting in the bush. She throws out an arcane orb, connecting onto a few. Not sure if she saw them go to the boss, but they don't have 16s on the side of uh, Juice Pirates. So I don't know if they're going to try and step in. They are going to try and step in. Durr is going to see this with the Storm Bolt to the face of ETC. They shift from the Bright Wing. No Emerald wins. That's going to be a stage dive in from ETC. They're trying to steal the point. That's a reset from... Oh my god, Li Ming. No, it wasn't a reset from Li Ming. It just looked like it for a second. That's a very low Anduin with the speed of Pius trying to get away. Vol vaults forward. She gets the decent damage. The blink forward from Bright Wing. This triple kill might be game over. Wow. Arcane Orb just like right between these, uh, these two. And here we go. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I say Illidan is not competitively viable ever. And then Stark literally comes out with the clip immediately. All right, Kor is going to be falling here, and uh, Li Ming will be dying as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into a map number three, and I just got to say, Zeratul only has not played Zeratul at all. Well, I will say this, Stark. You don't need to ban Zeratul against Zeratul only. Oh, God. Excuse me. Managed to get to the uh, mute button. <laughs> Stark. Let's see, you have to ban, uh, you have to buy, ban Tassadar and Vala. How can, how can we somehow take action against this player for their vile abuse for the player trust? <laughs> uh, you could, uh, you could, like, gift a bunch of subs to the channel. Yeah, that's how. I think, I think the only thing that could possibly upset the Zeratul only player is if you were to just gift subs to the channel. I think that's, I think. <laughs> oh God. I, my back is just absolutely, it's like, it's like a bag of uh, Oval Redenbacher pap popcorn. Ugh. And you sit up straight and it just, it just starts crackling like, oof. Oh, look at that. There's no Zeratul in this game. Let's see, is there a ban on the Zeratul? Not their channel though. Yeah, no, this channel, my channel, my my twitch.tv slash Bahamut Gaming. Match link. Let's take a look. Oh look, no Zeratul ban. Hmm. Oh, this is awkward. Uh but there's no re 
really good questing talents at level one. It's about damn uh, time. Revolver, I was completely kidding, but thank you for five tier one gifted subs. That'll show them. Uh, seriously, thank you so much for five tier one gifted subs. That is extremely generous of you. Thank you for ten gifted subs in this channel. Uh, thank you for paying it forward from Cavalier. Uh, thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. I, I seriously do. Thank you so very much. Uh, the players did not swap sides. Let's do... Uh, it's about damn time. Nancy! Thank you as well for five tier one gifted subs. Thank you for a thousand seventeen subs in this channel. Holy crap. Yeah, that'll show that'll show Zeratul only. Uh thank you, seriously, for the crazy amount of gifted subs. Thank you all so very much. Thank you all so so much. Nancy, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks for swinging through, bud. Oh. I agree, Interchip. I agree. Uh all right, so we'll do we'll do a Twitch prediction of which team will get to the uh which team will get the first Which team will get the first Dragonite of the game? Uh Uther. More like Zer actually only. <laughs> yeah. Uther, thank you for the Prime Gaming for 6 months. Thank you for kicking off a hype train. Uh, I guess we should hang out here for a minute. If you would like to take part in the hype train, you got a four and a half minutes to get to take part in it. Uh, yeah, I uh, let's uh, let's just hang out here for a couple minutes and we'll, we'll we'll hang out with the hype train. And uh, after the hype train is over, we'll get into the game. What are my main characters? I like playing Muradin, Asmodan, Sonya. Uh, I like playing Hanzo a little bit. Uh, Tassadar's been kind of fun as of lately. Uh, I enjoy, I enjoy playing Murky and Abathur. I think they're fun, like in quick match and stuff like that. Uh, Cho'Gall, of course, is always a good time. Uh, Joanna's, Joanna can be fun at times. I'd say I lean, like, tankish. I lean tankish or maybe ranged assassin. Oh, I love playing Falstead. I also love playing Falstead. No Butcher or Cho on that list. I was getting to the Cho Gull. Butcher, meh. Butcher, meh. I, don't know. I, I mean, Butcher's fun, but he, I don't know. It's all right. Oh, excuse me. All right, well, as I said, if you'd like to take part in the hype train, we got one going on. So we're, we're gonna hang out here for a minute or two more. Dahaka, oh, Dahaka's great too. You're right. I love playing Dahaka. I would say, I would say, like, I enjoy playing a solid quarter of the hero list in total. Like, easily a quarter of the heroes in the game. I like playing. Like, I very much enjoy playing. I would say, seventy-five percent of like the heroes in the game. I'm like, all right, cool. And there's probably like a 25% category where I'm like, I don't really want to play that. Like, I don't really want to play White Mane. I don't really want to play Stukov. I really, I don't really want to play Zeratul. Uh, I don't really want to play Keltazad or Li Ming. Um, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, some of those, some of those mechanical heroes I'm, I'm not too excited about. Since we've become a medevac, only Morales, I legitimately enjoy playing her a lot now. I enjoy, like, I love playing Lieutenant Morales as a healer because, like, grenade build is so much fun. Grenade build is very, very fun. All right, uh, doesn't seem like we have any uh, more trains for the uh, for the hype train, so let's go ahead and jump into the next map. Uh, there is a gamble that'll be taking place. I'll introduce the teams, and then I will uh, start the gamble. Welcome into Dragonshire, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare map number plan. three in our first best of three of the day and we are going to be seeing team versus juice pirates and we have a gamble going on right now as to which team will get the first dragonite of the game which team will get the first dragonite of the game we got an etc hanzo chen chromie brightwing for team on the side of juice pirates we've got a blaze murd and sergeant hammer tychus and rhaegar 10 seconds it's going well. It slipped horribly, and I'm tired, though. Five, Nancy, I feel four, like everybody, I feel like everybody has one, been sleeping bad, like, last night. 
I slept bad last night. My neighbor slept bad last night. Cavalier slept bad last night. I don't think anyone slept good last night. That it's just it's big sleep trying to trying to steal steal away our. I always sleep. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Good scatter out from Hanzo. Is going to be going into the uh, target practice at level one, so he's got a storm bolt into the. Uh, Sergeant Hammer picks up the extra stack right there. That actually is all three stacks on the Sergeant Hammers. You get the little one tick next to the Hanzo as Chromi almost gets the kill onto the Sergeant Hammer right there. Slept well, but you're medicated. Nice scatter out from Hanzo gets first blood for the side of team. Hang up on Tensmarons. Uh, well, I internship. I hope uh, I hope that gets resolved for you, bud. By the way, I might be driving down the mountain tomorrow morning to uh, finish out my 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 blood work and stuff testing. I was gonna go on Monday, but then I realized that's a U.S. holiday, and I kind of don't want to wait all the way till Tuesday. So I might go tomorrow morning. So I might be a little late for stream tomorrow. It just depends. I'll keep you all up to date on Discord. That'll be. I'll update everyone in Discord. The place that I have to go opens up at 7.30 in the morning, so I'll probably just go, like, right when they open up and then drive right back up. Uh, thank you all for the hype train. I very much do appreciate it. Any thoughts on Zarya? I can't seem to make her work. Uh, Zarya is usually played to uh, as a flex to empower a hyper-carry assassin. Yeah, I would agree. I would say, like, something like a Zeratul, a Vala. Those are a Grey main. Those are all great heroes to pair into Zarya. Um, you could also, you could play Zarya Sergeant Hammer and basically be a, a support for Sergeant Hammer, just giving her a bubble from time to time, allowing things like this to happen. I would say, like, for Zarya, it's, it's, Crush put it perfectly, you are, you are a hero that empowers. You are a, you are a, you're not a healer, you're a support. Like Medivh, Medivh is a support, Abathur is a support, Vikings, they're a support. Sergeant Hammer, got shot in the face by a bunch of sand, dead. There you go. Yeah, thank you, Stark. Same. This two uh, days of holiday. Oh, nice. Yeah, we have Labor Day on Monday, so I am probably going to be just lazy all day. But if I go down tomorrow morning, then I don't have to drive down the mountain next week. Big braining it out here. My top Zarya tip, break your shields, you want them to die. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 you really want to make sure you keep that energy up and you, and you, like, um, I'm, okay, there's no, so, like, right now, like, if, if, if you're a Zarya and there's no wave, pop a shield, walk into towers, take a bunch of damage, then walk out before the towers actually deal real damage to you, like, let your bubble tick damage and figure out how much, like, how many shots you can take with a W. Like, hit W, see how many shots you can take, like, in try mode. You can always do that. And then building out your shield, yeah. Constantly, like, managing your energy and building out, like, using your shields to break and stuff like that. Always good. I also think Zarya works really well with dive-based heroes, like the Greymane, uh, like the Zeratul, like a Nubarak as well. Uh, you bubble them, a Nubarak goes in, Greymane goes in, Diablo can go in. She definitely can deal damage. I'm not saying that you can't you can't deal damage as a Zarya, but you are very much a you are a support. You 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 are a support before you are an assassin. All right. Uh, sorry, I was just skimming chat. 10 talents here on the horizon for both sides, so we can go ahead and cycle through the numbers. Uh, looks like we're going into the uh, spell power for the Hanzo at level 7. Nicotine helps, eh? Hmm. Oh man, I'm, I'm coming up on like, uh, what is it, 7 years of not, no, no cigarettes? I think it's I think it's like seven years for me soon. It'll be November first. Yeah, because it was like 2015 when I quit. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I still have dreams about cigarettes all the time. <laughs> it's it's so weird. It's so weird how brains work, but. I remember like my friends, like one of my buddies visited, he's like, oh, you wanna have a cigar? I was like, I don't know if I should. Like there's, there is nicotine in it, but even when I was a cigarette smoker, like cigars were like nothing for me. It was like, I didn't get like a nicotine buzz. What is happening in the fight though, is that's gonna be an ETC going down. Another kill, uh, that's actually first kill for the side of Juice Pirates, I'm just realizing. Cannabis didn't help, made it more sensitive. That makes sense. I had a friend who got a tattoo. And she, she was just like, I was, I, she was just like, she's like, I made a horrible decision. I was like, what happened? She's like, I smoked weed before I went and got a tattoo. I'm like, what does that do? And she's like, it made everything worse. <laughs> Apparently it makes, it, it just made, it made like the tattoo area extremely sensitive. And I was like, okay, I, I guess I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep note of that. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, welcome back, bud. You don't smoke cigars, only uh, cannabis. Got you. I I I love I love smoking a cigar when I was a cigarette smoker, but I'm just afraid that if I it, since it has nicotine in it, I'm just afraid of anything with nicotine. So maybe when I'm older, maybe when I'm older and I have better self control. Dragonite available in mid lane. Blaze will get the counter channel in top. Chen unable to get the Dragonite through mid. You don't smoke, your friend gave you uh, lip tobacco, you're sick for a week. Oh, dude, oh. Chewing tobacco or, you know, whatever it's called. Oh God, no, I hate that stuff. Even when I was a cigarette smoker, I couldn't even do that. You wouldn't risk it? Yeah, I'm not either, yeah. As I said, maybe when I'm older, maybe when I'm older, but like, Right now, like if I, I'm still having dreams about c cigarettes and stuff, even seven years almost later. That's also my excuse. That way I can I can I can say no to people, because you always have to give people a reason nowadays for things. Chen kills the uh, Tychus up in the top lane. Sergeant Hammer trying to kill the Chromie through bottom, but it doesn't work out. We do have a very low Rhaegar who will fall. Zero two only on the Hanzo. Maybe looking to uh, back out of here as Chromie does die to the Murden. Yeah, the Zeratul only gets the agility over the wall. We have the counter channel to the Dragonite, the Sunshine over to the members of team. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too. Like when you when you smoke a cigar, you're not inhaling it. You you you're not supposed to inhale a cigar. It's it's all about. And I, and I know and I know the wording on this sounds wrong, but it's all about mouthfeel. <laughs> It's all, it's all, it's all about that mount. Oh, stage dive ETC, Sergeant Hammer boosts away. I think you've already overcome this nicotine craving your body has felt. I don't think so. I still have dreams about it, man. I still, I still, uh, oh shit. Does anyone remember who got first Dragonite? Wasn't it Team? Didn't Team get first Dragonite? I'm pretty sure Team got first Dragonite because they were sieging in through the bottom when I was making the example of Zarya. That's what I thought, Chess Leader. Thank you. Bromi almost gets the kill onto the Tychus. That, I think that was a bingo square as well. I think that's a bingo square if, uh, it, well, it would have been if, if all three shots had connected, but there was two out of three. They hit hammer with sand. You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. Let me pay it out. Which team gets first Dragonite? It is team. You know, I just made this realization, Chess. If someone has a VPN, they could essentially vote on the, the, the viewer game multiple times, couldn't they? Shit. I think I made it by IP address. I think I might have messed up, I just realized. I'm probably gonna have to play Toho for the subathon. <laughs> I'm I'm probably gonna have to play Toho. But right now we do have quite a bit of damage into the enemy. Sergeant Hammer will be falling. If I smoke the terrorist win. Really? That's that's a new one. 
Viper getting storm bolted by Blank, and Rhaegar comes in with the bite on the butt. That is an ETC and a Brightwing to fall. Dragonite goes over to the side of Juice Pirates. And what do they get with this uh, mid-game Dragonite 10 minutes in? You're not doing anything to stack the vote. I only ask people who regularly watch to vote. Ah! I, I looked at it this morning. I shit you not, Chess. I, I opened up the stream this morning, and I went to go... I, I typed in the command to go, like, look at the results as the stream was starting, and Toho had five votes, and as I was looking at the votes, two more votes came in. It's probably even more now. It's probably even more now. <laughs> They have to plant the bomb first. I can, I can hear that in my own head. Dragonite will fall. Tyka's trying to shred through the fort. Nice arrow from Hanzo does connect. Rhaegar with the cleanse. Stage dive from the ETC. As the Commandeer Odin will be popped. Bunker down from the blaze. A lot of useless Terran objects on the ground. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The people want their suffering. Don't worry, I'll be suffering for 18 hours straight for you all. You'll be fine. I cleared it on easy without losing a life last night. Oh, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I like how it's just the assumption is just you are going to be playing Toho. How's your day going, Sedonis? Okay. Sergeant Hammer dead, Chen dead, and we'll have a camp for bottom lane to be grabbed. No invade from the side of Juice Pirates, and so double camp from the blue team in bottom lane. Good clear from Tychus, as well as the Rhaegar, and all right. Top lane does have a camp that will need to be addressed at some point. Looks like Blaze will be going to go amplify that siege to the top lane. Six to nine in kills, favoring the side of team. Chromie trying to throw out a sand blaster too. Hanzo did go for the flawless technique, so this is this is kind of the the, uh, the way that I like to play Hanzo from time to time with Q build. Your uh, the, like your burst ability is actually really really high, and then to a, a, a stationary target like Sergeant Hammer, should be pretty easy to land the initial Q to follow up with the auto attack. Which like between the two of them, you deal like like fifteen hundred damage in, in like a, a second and a half or something crazy. It's it's, it's actually quite wild. Hanzo gets the arrow onto the back line. Now see, if Chen had Wandering Keg, he could have pushed everyone into the allies. Just saying, Wandering Keg would have been uh, better here. Commandeer Odin chasing on to Nyan, who does go for the time stop, the longest stasis in the game. ETC going to try and help out. Brightwing maybe going to get a soothing mist, a critical mist, a blink heal. Tychus, any grenades? Blink heal, and Tychus goes down. Bottom lane, Moonshrine over to the side of Juice Pirates, but team? They're gonna be looking for this next Dragonite here, I do think. What is the longest game you've casted? Oh God, probably 40 plus minutes. Somewhere in the 40 minute mark area. I don't remember the exact time, but I know, I I'm pretty sure there was a game that I casted that went to about 40 something minutes. I actually think it was during CCL too. I think I think it was I think it was like somewhere around 40, maybe just shy of 40 minutes, and I'm pretty sure it was during CCL. Uh, I think it was like season three or season four, probably. It was like a Garden Terror game that was just like insanely long in season. I think it was actually season two. I think season two there was like this insanely long Garden Terror map. Cause didn't they, we, I think cause they got rid of Garden Terror in season three and they voted Garden Terror back in in season four. Pretty sure. Blink heals are so close, dude, for real, Ken. How you doing today, friend? Chen trying to jump away. He's got a lot of, uh, Chen kills Chen. Hanzo rips an arrow, by the way, for anyone who's ever said to me that this bug means that Chen doesn't give experience to the enemy team, they just got a chunk of experience, so there you go. There was someone in chat like a week or two ago who was like, when Chen kills Chen, it doesn't give the enemy experience, and I'm like, there's no way that's not, that. there's no way we have not discussed that as a bug. 
There's no way that existed for as long as this has existed, and no one was like, huh. Oh, it doesn't give experience, like. That'd be such that'd be such a broken mechanic in the game, because people could exploit that very easily. Uh, there it is. Chen killed Chen. I don't know why I find it so funny that it can happen. So it has to do with the, um, if you don't know, it has to do with the shielding on Chen. If Chen uses his stagger and he basically dies with that stagger bar, it can cause it to, to basically say that Chen kills Chen. But it's coded that you still, the enemy team still gets the experience. Uh, it just shows up visually because of the coding because Chen technically kills Chen. Dragonite through the mid lane in favor for Juice Pirates as they've got the 20 talent tier advantage. We do have Blaze down for the next 39. Chen kicking in. Storm Earth and Fire is available. That's going to be a kick out from the Dragonite. Bottom lane has a camp coming through. Stage dive from the ETC. 30 seconds still on Blaze as Hanzo rips a scatter to clear out the Dragonite. Alright, Rhaegar and friends will clear out the bottom lane, and we continue to see what happens here on Dragonshire. We we actually, what, we're 16 minutes in, 20 apiece, and we still have all keeps up. Still have two forts on the side of Juice Pirates. Invade onto the camp over here. I wonder what kind of juice the pirates are targeting. It's obviously apple juice. Everybody loves apple juice. Commandeer Odin is used. Big red button. Does get some clear onto the camp a little bit. Stagger from Chen. He's going to try and drink through a lot of that pain. Does have the 20 talent here. Did go for the fortifying brew. ETC, death metal. God forbid I say death mosh. Apple juice OP. Floor juice. Oh, floor juice is delicious. Who doesn't love some floor juice? Thrown, out, thrown, thrown by some old man. Stage dive ETC, he comes in looking for the power slide potential, gets it on to two others. Chromie slowing sands, causing a little bit of uh, chaos over here. Ancestor healing will connect on to Rhaegar. I don't know if the Farseer's Blessing works out in the bunker right there. I don't think it actually did because Tyka still goes down, a massive scatter. It's a quadra kill to the side of Team. And what are they going to do? They thought about top lane because the camp was already there. 20 some seconds on the Dragonite. I think they get mid lane fort and set up for Dragonite, maybe push through bottom. Like Chen goes top, Brightwing goes bottom, the rest of the team sieges bo uh, bottom lane, and then uh, Dragonite quickly. I like hot pineapple juice with cinnamon. That sounds delicious. I also feel like you could put a little bit, a little bit of like rum in there. Maybe like a little bit of like spiced rum, just a touch. Not, not trying to get, we're not, we're not trying to, we're not trying to get just wasted, but just like a touch of rum would be kind of interesting. Also, that just sounds like Caribou Lou. <laughs> 151, pineapple juice, and uh, Malibu rum. <laughs> it's amazing in the winter. That's a really good idea. I should, I should do that for the winter. When we have one of our snow inns, I should do that. I should go buy pineapple juice and cinnamon. I think I still have uh, rum in the, in the cupboard. I like hot pineapple, hold the juice on top of cheese. What? <laughs> You're just trying to get me to talk about pizza. Commandeer Odin is pushing back the bright wing inside the Dragonite that is going to find the keep front gate in the bottom lane, but I think that's as much as the members of team are going to be getting here. Juice Pirates are able to hold and defend. Oh, a hot cider is good too. Oh, I'm out of tea. That's that's what I need. I need a hot drink. I have another cup in the kitchen. I have to grab after this map. So Dragonite, twenty percent. Uh, it's looking like this is kind of the end of it, or the end of the Dragonite phasing. Just gonna use the uh, flame breath to clear out the wave a little bit faster. Okay. Sonic from. Uh, Hanzo does scatter, excuse me, does scout out the Sergeant Hammer. Dragonite, three seconds, gonna get one kick onto the blaze. 
blink heals in range of the ETC. The storm bolt did connect. Bunch of spider mines sitting in the bush from Sergeant Hammer. ETC is going to be invisible from the level 20 of Brightwing, the invisible friends. It used to be uh, uncapped duration. Now it's uh, limited to... I actually don't know how many seconds it's limited to. We can check in a, in, a, in a few moments here once we look at some of these stats. Do you want to point out the top lane does have the catapult coming through? Dealing a decent amount of damage into structures. Uh, 708 damage into structures as the bunker comes down from Blaze. And Odin as well from the Tychus. Ancestor healing will be used early in the engagement. Murden in the back line does get the Avatar out. We have the stage dive from ETC trying to put pressure onto the back line. He wants to die right here. If he dies right here, that's a beautiful death mosh. Death Metal from ETC sets up the kill onto Sergeant Hammer. Chen kicks in with the Storm Earth and Fire. We have a thousand HP on the Muradin as Commandeer Odin's trying to auto attack and kite backwards. In this Odin form, Rantor loses one of the clones, but he still has two others, so he'll be fine for now. No Dragonite, but the announcement shouldn't be far off. Muradin may be seen over here. Definitely seen now from the double scouting of Hanzo and Chromie. It is a uh, nine second, nine second. Mm -hmm. There's the Dragonite once again. Siege Shine in bottom lane has like an HP. <laughs> All right, ETC dead for a few more seconds. We'll have stage dive a little after he spawns. Might utilize that to uh, jump into an engagement if Hanzo can scout things out. Gonna use that Time Walker's Pursuit <clears throat> in the rotation down to bottom lane. 16 to 18, excuse me, 16 to eight in kills. And there's that Dragonite. 15 on the bottom lane camp. We do see Tychus over here, Blank stepping up with the Blaze. Stage dive from ETC is available. He's going to go top lane and then stage dive down into bottom for the fight. Picks up a little bit of experience there. Tychus to soak up mid. At least that's the expectation is that it's stage dive out of top, but he also might just stick up here and push out the wave really quickly. Ooh, he's not showing, so it's okay. Time Walker's Pursuit will see the camp being worked on. Just keep watching ETC right now to see what he's going to be doing. He actually just uh, waits for the wave to clear out. He might have been seen by the Kata, not 100% sure on that. Chen just kind of floating in between. Another wave to be pushed up by ETC over here in the top lane. Nice power slide face melt. Clear that out. So while ETC is split pushing in the top lane, we do have the bottom lane camp on the keep right now, Tyke is going to start autoing on the sidewall, opening things up so Chromie can't use the slowing sands in the uh, pinch point. Big red button, Muradin steps in, lands the storm bolt, double storm bolt with the rewind. There's going to be the dwarf toss in as well. Stage dive in from the ETC, big face melt to knock back the enemy. And bottom lane, keep has already fallen, face shift from Brightwing, Muradin a little low on the left side of our screen. Hanzo, can he get the damage necessary? He rips a huge arrow, connecting onto three. Ancestor healing onto a couple. Bunker down from Blaze. Chen gonna lose one of the clones on Storm Earth and Fire. Hanzo, agility over the wall. Kata in top lane is on the keep, and it's actually dealing damage to said keep, but bottom lane still has the fight to break out. It seems like Juice Pirates will be able to get out of here, though. Time Walker's Pursuit. We've got a time trap as well from Chromie. Big scatter into the face of Blaze. Invade onto the camp. Chen kicks in. Face shift from Brightwing. Gets that healing back up. Top lane catapults are cleared out. The keep down to about 40 or so percent. And the engagement still being chased in. Stage dive from ETC. Doesn't connect onto Blaze. He mounts up. He's looking to chase in. But it looks like Kataram's able to just mount up and back away as well. Top lane. They're going to go for the counter channel onto the Dragonite. ETC in position for the channel, but it's not going to be quick enough. Also delay from Sergeant Hammer. Double uh, double camp for bottom lane will need to be addressed at some point. Rhaegar to go do that. He will show on map. So Rhaegar showing in bottom. This, this is a great time for team to look for a fight. They also have the arrow from Hanzo. Slowing Sands are already out as well. Arrow is going to just fly on by the enemy. ETC splitting and peeling that Tychus. Tychus, Commandeer Odin is available. Will he pop it to try and save himself? Chen kicks in. No. All right. Tychus goes down. Stormbolt from 
the Murden. He pops the rewind. He's going to try and back away, but he is a dead dwarf. Bottom lane, we did have one wave cleared out by the Rhaegar. He's going to look for Dragonite, but he's going to go down. There's no way you make it out of this one alive. And that was a nice play from the side of team. Tell Bandit he's perfect. Mr. Bandit, you are perfect. I love you. Thanks, uh, DNL. Face shift from Brightwing into mid. This might be game ending Dragonite. Uh, they actually technically could go top with Dragonite to end. Stage dive from the ETC. Bottom. Oh, somebody. Did he leave? Uh, he must have left bottom lane too quickly. I think Brightwing face shift from top. Either way. Mm, still, still, still doable, but also becoming more and more defendable. Gotta love the breakdancing Rhaegar. Yeah, his uh, his model spinning. Uh, Nancy, thank you for the tier one gifted sub to DNL. Thank you so much, Nancy, for gifting uh, DNL a sub to the channel. Thank you so much for your support, Nancy. Uh, DNL, enjoy your gifted sub. Alrighty, could be the final push. 19 to 8 in our levels. Team looking to end this best of three and take a 2 1 in the matchup here. There's a very low blaze to go down at the bottom of our screen. ETC to fall, Death Metal to play a, uh, looks like no one showed up to the concert for that one. Dragonite still dealing significant damage, but I do think it's over, and that is map number three over to the side of Team, and the series over to Team. Looks like Team will win it. <laughs>